What? 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 Oh, the article, the, the interview. What's it like? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Super sleuth or PR stunt? This is a hatchet job, that's what this is. Wilkes! They're quoting Wilkes, listen to this. Mrs. Reason tends to hinder rather than to help the very important work that the police do. But what would you expect from an amateur? <gasps> amateur? Right. Well, I'll show them. Didn't make it to bed again then, I see. Well, the book on the Civil War must be going great guns. 20,000 words and counting. Oh. Deadline, end of the week. You'll be brilliant. You know what you're doing. <sighs> you'll smash it. Hopefully. Actually, uh, I wanted you to read something. It's our letter of engagement, Mrs. Duckett. We need you to sign it. Well, you shouldn't believe everything you read in the paper. Or your husband, for that matter. Miserable old goat. Oh, morning, Dottie. Morning. Still no news on red, I'm afraid. But we are trending on social media. We got some posters made. Red will turn up. Uh, hello? Took you like a brown to see Mrs. Rosen. How about you take a seat? I'll be right with you. How about I don't? Good morning, team. Ah, this is my old friend, Tiggy. This is the old Chaz. We've known each other since our 20s, and I promised her preferential treatment. No such thing. We have crimes to solve. By that, I don't mean missing dogs and honey traps. I want something nice and juicy to get my teeth stuck into. Death threats juicy enough for you? I get the reason. Very pleased to meet your acquaintance. Do tell me all about it. Yeah, touch up and you'll be fine. Excuse me? No, I, I meant... Uh, just checking you're okay for tonight's talk to the Historical Society. All set and raring to go. Do you want uh, PowerPoint, slides, or virtual soundtrack? Could cover all bases if you like. Your call. Cool. Just a talk would be okay, I think. Ah, okay, okay. How many are we expecting? At the moment, three, including me, four if you include yourself. Okay. See you at seven at the village hall. Actually, could we make it six? I mean, if you could come to the vicarage, it'd just be more cosy. Cosy. And it's my daughter's 21st tonight. We live at the manor house at Harris Come Magna, and we've organised a party to celebrate and to announce her engagement to Perry Peterson. It's all gone horribly wrong. The caterers have left me down, the ice sculpture has melted. Listen, lady, I was promised a death threat. Show her the note, Tiggs. This arrived yesterday. If Cassandra marries Perry, she will die. Don't tell police. Why not tell the police? Because it says not to. So? If someone threatened my daughter or me mum or Gemma or whatever, I'd be legging it to the cops. Simple as. I don't want the police involved. Imagine what people would say. Gossip would be rife. And that isn't pleasant, is it? So I turn to Charles here, as always. He's regaled us at the country club with his colourful accounts of his work here. So naturally, he came to our rescue. Naturally. Although I hope you're not the amateur busybody that the police say you are. Oh, no, not at all. In fact, I can assure you, Mrs. Ligert-Brown, that I can get to the bottom of this. For I never saw professional fee. Of course. Whatever it takes. I'm sure with Charles at the helm, we'll get results. Set this end, rogering that. A big welcome to you all. Uh, 
um, there will be speeches and fireworks to follow. Uh, and in the meantime, please do help yourselves to food and drink and enjoy Cassandra's favourite dance, the Argentinian tango. So, tell me, boys, how's the sleepover going? Is this the beginning of a beautiful, blossoming romance? So far, so good. Although I wouldn't exactly call it a bromance. It's only the weekend, isn't it, Roy? A change is as good as a rest, Maggie. Oh, gosh, these two are fairly going for it, aren't they? Oh. Uh, I see gorgeous George has caught your attention. He's an old school friend, you know. And we used to hang with Tiggy back in the day. Three of us were thick as thieves. You know, he's an ex-hedge fund manager. Gave it all up, just like that, to pursue his lifelong passion for the Argentine tango. Is that even legal? Mirada and Cabafio. What do you know? What, what? Mirada. He looks into her eyes, asking if she would like to dance. Cabafio. He cocks his head beckoning her to him. Of course he does. <laughs> now I see where you get it from. <laughs> Tony, avert your eyes. <laughs> oh, okay. What's happening here then? <laughs> well, I know exactly what's happening. It's there. Is it? Good God, he looks like he's seen a ghost. <laughs> Actually, you know, he has. What do you mean? His wife, Helen. You're a dead ringer for her. Dead ringer as in... Uh... As in she's dead. Oh. And remember, this was Cromwell's first command. He rampaged across the field, pulverising Prince Rupert's right wing. Rupert's defeat was severe. He was unhorsed and, legend has it, was forced to hide in a bean field. <gasps> Quite a pile, isn't it? Mm. Used to belong to your friend George. When Helen died, he sold everything. He and his daughter moved to a cottage on the estate, and he turned to dance. Lord of the Manor to Lord of the Dance. A much happier Lord, I might add. Charles, good to see you. How are you doing? Very well. Agatha, very pleased to meet you. George, George, sorry to interrupt. We're back on. We still have work to do. Yes, thank you, Emma. Be right there. <laughs> it's good to meet you, Agatha. You too. I am actually vegan, but salmons don't have eyelashes, I don't think so. Excuse me, no scoffing and absolutely no drinking. Come on, look lively, mister. Mingle. Eyes, ears. Well, I'm the master mingler. I'm the master of mingling. Watch and learn, sweet chuff. Mm -hmm. So, how are things really going at Charles's? Yeah, it's all right. It's a little bit cold and damp and lonely in the attic. Well, if you, if you want to come home where it's warm and cosy and friendly, you know, you know where to come. No, it's fine. I'll leave you two lovebirds to it. Cheers. I said no drinking, didn't I? Go, mingle. Hi. Can I buy you a free drink? Yes, you can. Hey. Captain Mrs. Bush, how are you? Lovely to see you. Do go through. Let me introduce you. This is Felicity, my darling goddaughter. Nice to meet you. Cassandra, my daughter. Cassie, look, he's arrived. Harry, Cassie, look, he's arrived. Cassie, look, he's arrived. Oh, good God. Oh, oh, look, he's ready. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. It's Cassie's big day, so she's just a bit excited. It means the world to her. Perry, is there anyone that you could think of that would maybe... would possibly harm Cassandra? I don't know, an ex-boyfriend, maybe? Oh, no, Cassie, no, no, Cassie's an angel. Um, mother, maybe. Are you ill? Gotta practice my big number. 
see what it is is I stupidly agreed to do this tango routine after the speeches by the swimming pool, because well, that's where I proposed to Cassie, by the swimming pool. Oh. Take the truth, I'm absolutely dreading it. I've had lessons with George, mm. right, but... Do I have two left feet? Uh, well, not predominantly, well, see, no. Well, I'm more of a two-tone man myself. Just a Ooh. bit of scar, you know, a bit of reggae. If I mess this up, Cassie's gonna kill me. Or her mother will. Good evening, sorry, oh. thank you. He's a nice big boy, isn't he? <laughs> Not really. Wrong side of the tracks. His father, Harrison, has done time. Regular family of jail. Boys. Really? Well, why didn't you tell us this before? Is he here tonight? God, no. Criminals in my house. No, he was banned. Didn't go down well. He was spitting. Enough to harm Cassandra? That type are capable of anything. Where will I find them? In a gutter somewhere. So was it just Harrison Peterson that you object to, or is it pretty much everyone from the wrong side of the tracks, Perry included? Well, obviously he wouldn't be my first choice for Cassandra, but what can we do? Cassandra wants to be a professional dancer in the West End. She's already started auditioning. Cassie is amazing. Much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Cass and Fliss have been dancing together since they were knee-high to a grasshopper. Isn't that right? Do you remember we used to drive you insane by playing the same song on repeat? Practically all the time. Don't. So is uh, Cassandra's father here tonight? Jeremy works away a lot. He's in the middle of a big deal. Travel industry, he's securing contracts with a major five-star hotel. And his door is 21st. Can't be helped. Ooh, time for the speeches. <laughs> oh. oh, Dad, can we have a look? Not now, darling. I'm oh. too busy thinking about the dances. Ooh, couple of sightings of red. Who? The dog. Are you, uh, you in position? How is it? Everything seems to be good up my end. Charlie boy? So far, so good. Flank the chairs, Charles. Assume position. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to this happy bull celebrate. No one can. Imagined it. Charles, I know what I saw. <sighs> Who set off the fireworks? Get out, you frightful woman! Look at me! You threw in my dress! I saved your life! Because there was a man up there, a gunman, with his sights firmly set on you. I know what I saw. You saw nothing! Because there was nobody there, you ridiculous creature! 
I should have known you'd be trouble from the story in the papers. All right, so what about Tango George? I saw him <laughs> trotting along to the house just as the speeches were starting. Dad, I'm sorry, you have got that totally wrong. It's ridiculous. We've known each other for yonks, haven't we, Charles? Tell her. Oh, look, the police. Well done. Here they are on time. Who called the police? Me. I did. Why did you do that? Oh, everyone's leaving. We won't get to do our dance. The party is <laughs> over. Get out. I do not want you here. You hired me. And now I am firing you. All right. And as for you, I read the article. Weasel. It's DCI weasel to you. She needs to be stopped. Yeah, it's music to my ears. If people didn't choose to engage a private investigator, Mrs. Laggett Brown, then the need for them would be significantly reduced. I know what I saw, Bill. In fact, <laughs> I think this might be rather a good time for you to tell the police exactly why you hired me. Just go, you crazy! Tiggy, Tiggy, listen, I've got this. Don't worry. I think we should leave. All right, all right, all right, Charles. I'm going. For now. Mm-hmm. But someone let off those fireworks early. Mm. And I think you should just check out Harrison Peterson. Hmm? Charles? Wild imagination, that one. This is a crazy woman. So, who did she kill? <laughs> Your face. Just joking. <laughs> How did they think it? <laughs> no, you go. For what I was going Good on. morning! Boy, have I missed central heating. Fraith's was very drafty. And someone didn't lock up properly last night, so I'm back. Carry on, don't mind me. Well, I was just going to say, how did the talk go last night? Because you were in bed when I got back. Great. Great. How was work? Good, good. Agatha dodged a bullet. You mean by not coming to my talk? No, I mean an actual bullet. Roy. What? What happened? Well, someone shot in her direction and she dodged it. Nine lives, this one. Roy. Agatha. It was just a little bullet and it wasn't aiming at me per se. It just sort of went and I went Missed. and it just... You have somewhere to be, Roy. Office. Now. Okay. Agatha, talk to me. James, I'm fine. Look at me. I'm absolutely fine. Roy Silver. You're not about to take a running jump at us, are you? No, no. Well, not unless you've got a swimming pool. <laughs> no, actually, I was just passing. Oh, uh, I thought you were Kazi based I am, but I just wanted a quick word with George. In private. Oh. OK. No, uh, no problem. Uh, George, shall I come back later so we can finish rehearsing that routine? Actually, let's, um... Let's... Let's leave it for today. I need to think about the duet thing, and I'm not sure it's working. Really? <sighs> okay. Um, I'll see you later. Nice to see you. You too. And you and she. No, you no, know, just no, friends. Just friends. Fellow widowers. That's all. <laughs> Oh, goodness, look at all this. Yes, I have a 
passion for passion. Have you ever felt that, Agatha, that, that burning desire, that fire in the belly? Yes, I have, yes. But only when I drink Zambuca. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's my late wife, Helen. Did you know that the tango arose from the seedy waterfront areas in Buenos Aires? Uh, no, no, I did not. <laughs> the mating dance between barmaids and their customers in shady nightclubs. And with very few women around, the young men found themselves looking for excitement and joining in too. Hot and smoky, they would dance late into the night. Reckless, provocative, and... Deadly. Sensual, I was going to say. And that deadly and sensual sort of deadly, sensual dance. <laughs> so how can I help? Yes, well, uh, let's get straight to the point. What were you doing sneaking into the manor house just as the speeches were starting? Sneaking? Mm -hmm. Hardly. Well, the speeches are no real relevance to me, and I, I needed a comfort break. Oh, well, still, I mean, it, it, it must be a little odd. I mean, your old home in this place is it's quaint. It's but... really just bricks and mortar to me. After Helen passed, I lost all interest in material things. Life's too short. Why waste it? Now I live to dance. Have you ever tried tango? Uh, no. No, I have not. <laughs> Well, you should. I do classes, and you would be more than welcome. Got to cover the basics, Detective Constable Wong. Did you check if they have security cameras? I did, and they don't. Oh, soccer have been busy with the plastics. Careful. I think we'll be all right. We've requested phone coverage from the guests. See if someone caught the gunman on camera. Yes, yeah, if there was a gunman. Right, oh, careful now. I've been doing this a long time. Let's have a look. Sir? Yeah. We're wearing gloves. If Agatha said she saw something, she saw something. Or yeah, well, she thought she saw something. Attention seeking, that's all this is. Oh, I need more attention. I can't be better if I haven't got all the attention on me. Resin? Yeah, Agatha Raven. Yeah, I'm good, aren't I? Boys at the station. Resin. Or it could be gun oil. It could be a million different things. That could be oil for, for hair or body oil. Oh, you know, that sort of shimmery stuff, the glittery stuff that gets everywhere, right in your crevices. And that? That's my glove. <laughs> that? Well, it could be a million different things too, although it does look suspiciously like the spent cartridge from a gun, yeah. Here we go, sir. Yeah, I just nicked us some wool over. Got hundreds of statements to follow up on. Yeah, well, the quicker you get started. Oh, I'll be careful, Detective Constable Wall. Don't worry, Comet's bomb proof. He's a view, aren't you, boy? And you are? Oh, Tiggy's goddaughter. Grew up here, didn't you, darling? Mm. Before we bought the place. Uh, must be a bit strange. Not really. Tiggy's always treated me like one of her own and made me feel part of the family. Her mum, Helen, was a dear friend of mine. Comet was hers, and when she died, I saw to it that Fliss could spend as much time as she liked. Which was a massive comfort, to be fair. I don't know how I would have coped. Anyway, how can I help you? Agatha Raisin was right. A shot was fired. We found a spent cartridge in the bedroom. She saved Cassandra's life. Yeah. Unfortunately. No, no, I didn't mean it. She was also right about the fireworks. I spoke to your gardener. He'd gone off for a cigarette, so someone else set them off early. Yeah, to cover the sound of a gunshot. Hello, darling. How could you not be here, Daddy? 
see you. Ouch. What do you mean? What's going on? Uh, hello, me and Perry, engagement party. No, 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 that's next week. Oh, next week, right. Change of plan. I did tell you, didn't I? Did I? What the actual? Oh, you're so ridiculous. Oh, darling. Seems you were right all along. We found an empty cartridge in the bedroom. Huh, Cal's surprise. I presume she wants to rehire me then. No, we'll take it from here, thank you. When hell freezes over. No, correction, I'll take it from here. You've got paperwork to do. Excuse me. Where are we at on the matter? Nothing, no fingerprints. <sighs> Perry's dad, Harrison Peterson. He went down for three years. Financial irregularity centering on a nightclub. But why would he take a pot shot at his future daughter in law? Good question. Seems a very extreme reaction to not being invited. But there again, they are an odd bunch. Well, second that, Mrs. Laggett Brown tried to hide the whole event from her husband. Oh. What is all this lot? I thought I might take up a new hobby. Weird. <laughs> oh, what are you doing here? Reporting for duty. I thought I could help. You can't beat them and all that. And those that solve together, evolve together. I, uh, thought you had a deadline. You know me. I can multitask. Mm. OK, so, uh, where are we at on everything? I found Perra's dad. He's staying at Pillow's B&B in Denbley. Good. Well, maybe we should give him an early morning wake-up call. Excellent. I've had a few sightings of Red, so I could go with Bill and we could check that out after. Who's Red? The dog. Oh, right. Wow. Red Rum is his official name. Dotty named him after a racehorse. Red Rum? Really? Murder. Murder. Red, Red Rum. rum. Spelt backwards. backwards. The blues and twos. We save them for emergencies. Oh. So Billy the Bobby. You might have known you'd end up in the police. Do you love her? Yeah, I do. No two days are the same. We're well, not since Agatha moved to the village. Well done. Problem? <sighs> Just Wilkes chasing me. Welcome to my world. Right, you better let me speak to him first. I think you're running back up. Come on, then. Right, I'm going to do the talking. You just look important. Hello, Mr. Peterson. Police, open up, please. Okay, we've notified his son, Perry. Any thoughts on the suicide note? Really, that doesn't make any sense. I tried to kill Cassandra because I wanted Perry to get her money and give it to me. But I can't live with myself. Why can't he live with himself? He missed. Right, I need to give HQ a ring and update him on the latest. Hey, it's me. I've got news. You're really doing it, then? I am indeed. I am tripping the late Fandango in order to loosen a few lips and sink Tiggy Doodah's ship. Are you all saying Let me finish this paragraph. Right, go on then. What news? Dead. Come on, James, we're leaving. Right, talk to me. I'm listening. It was after a knee injury, actually. Is he? Ish. That's like an invitation to dance. Who's just arrived? Perry Peterson. Father died earlier. Clearly not that devastated about it. Well, 
these two doing here? Aggie, James, didn't expect to see you two here. Especially not you, James. George said he needed extra men, so... Don't. We thought as we're young, free and single, we might find some action. Good luck. Well, we are actually working. So now that you're here, I suggest you might do the same with a little light digging, perhaps. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, let's get started, shall we? We will start with the basic steps. Now, for those who are new, just try to go with the flow and try to follow my lead. Now, when the music changes, we'll change partners. Oh, and, of course, enjoy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Don't mind me. I'm just here to keep an eye on certain people. Police, you carry on. OK, well, let's do this. And remember, it is our real emotions that are exposed when we dance. Now, gentlemen, take your ladies in, hold hip to hip. Gents, you'll be going on your left foot forward first, ladies on your right foot back. And it goes. And step, step, step together, step and turn. Step, step together, step and. Good. Step together, step. Very nice. Very good, Agatha. Closer embrace, more passion. Think of your husband. I am? Yes, well, sort of. Let me show you. It's all about the rhythm. You've either got it or you have Yes, yes, I get it. And change partners. Now, gentlemen, take your ladies in. Hold hip what to hip. What gun is this bullet from? Gents, you'll be going on your left forward first, ladies. We'll have the results in a couple of days. James will know. Right, Red is definitely covering some distance. Sightings placed him here two days ago and here yesterday. Any news your end? Well, the pills bottle came back clean. Mm, that's a shame. Not really. Useful information. If it was a genuine suicide, it would have had prints all over it. Good point, Sherlock. Also, according to the autopsy, the barbiturates found in Peterson's stomach were barely dissolved, as if they'd been shoved down his throat after death. It's looking more and more likely he was smothered. Hang on, and there was no sign of forced entry. So doesn't that imply that the killer was someone he knew? Good point, Watson. What about the note? What does your handwriting expert say? Handwriting expert? Evesham police doesn't really stretch to that kind of thing. Oh. Something for us to look into, then. Ooh. It's James. Told you he'd know. Oh, my God, you'll never believe it. It's a 50 cal shell from a sniper rifle. A Barrett M107. Capable of effective fire up to 1,800 metres. Look, the type a professional would use. Professional what? Assassin. <laughs> Position. Your bodies should be like one. Starting with a promenade on the right step and over. Cross. Quick, quick, quick. Flail. Very nice. Quick, quick into the archos. Twist, twist, twist through the hips. Always go to dance classes when you're grieving? No. Um, I need the practice. Party's back on next weekend. <laughs> Why all the rush? Um, the marquee's still up. People are still about. You think he's on one. So, you and your father obviously weren't that close, were you? No. But I still loved him, I did. It's just... You didn't always get things right, that's all. Rubbish with money, mainly. You know that he left a note saying that he hoped that you would inherit all of Cassandra's money? Oh, well, I told him that, um... 
Me and Cass, we'd sorted out our wills already. Even everything to each other if anything happened. And change partners! Oh. Very nice. Two lines up and down. Five, six, seven, and seven. You're rather good at this, Charles. Has been served. Terrible business over the manor. Oh, awful. Mind you, you meet what you sow. I've known them both for years. The lack of grounds rub people up the wrong way. Change partners. Some people seem rather keen. What? Mm. Not at the party, but at Tangle. Not to mention your wife forgetting to mention your daughter's big day. Trouble at Paradise? Hardly. Misunderstanding, that's all. Tiggy thought she'd told me. It's only got the blood pumping. I know. Can't you just feel it coursing through your loins? I can't really feel anything. I think it's my spine. Thank you. Ah. I have an idea. Seeing as the Laggard Brown's engagement party is back on, I wanted to a duet, and I think you would be perfect. <laughs> oh, really? Me? No, no, I, I couldn't. You would be in good hands. And as for our newcomer, bravo! <laughs> Definitely the man of the class. Never saw you as a man of any hidden talents, or any talents for that matter. Where did you learn? Uh, from watching George at the engagement party. Well, you weren't there. No, but we requested mobile phone video from some of the guests at the party, and some of them had footage of George dancing. Oh, I watched it a hundred times. No, but my favourite moment is when they capture you. <laughs> what you push? Oh, yes, 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 all right. <laughs> Hold on, just scroll back. <laughs> what you Stop. Push? Oh, at the moment the gun is fired, the laser sight is not pointing towards Cassandra. It's Tiggy! The shooter. So, if Tiggy is the target, who wants her dead? Apart from me. Okay, everyone. Spitball time. Perry. Sick of being disapproved of by his soon-to-be mother-in-law, although... Tiggy really isn't that bad. Don't you just love it when she plays hardball? Roy! My money's on Jazza the Hobster. Marriage clearly made in hell. Midlife crisis written all over him. Designer clothes smells very trendy. Oh, but he claims he was away. I mean, and thanks to James, we now know the hit wasn't some random. And it's professional. Carried out by an assassin. Sorry. Publisher, it won't be a minute. Well, it certainly gives Jeremy a... Perfect alibi. He hires a hitman and then takes off. Bam! Bob's your uncle. Fanny's your aunt. What? But why? Why take yourself off and attract suspicion? I mean, if he's hired someone to do all his dirty work for him, why not just stick around? What if he inherits everything when Tiggy dies? Hmm? Have we thought of that? Roy? Can we just... That white, sir? <sighs> Roy! Have you been in touch with financials? Nothing, not as yet, not the full picture. Anyway, worst case scenario, end of play tomorrow. Uh, a push, first thing in the morning. Later this afternoon, a couple of hours should do it. Okay, okay, I'll call Bill now. Hang on, we knew the whole suicide thing was fake, right? Well, pill bottle clean. Pills forced down, plus it shows that Tiggy was the target, not Cassandra, like the note said. Never a dollar short, a day late this one. Why kill Harrison Peterson? I mean, unless he knew the shooter, of course. We know that Perry has a motive because Tiggy disliked him and his father. But why would he want to kill his own father? All right, picky. Anyone else? George? Regret selling? Maybe he was forced to sap. No, I could vouch for him. Helen's death hit him really hard. He just wanted out of the rat race, that's all. My totes get that. 
Plus, Tiggy lets Felicity hang around anyway. Oh, we should check out that flippity Felicity. Mm, for shizzle. What? For sure. I'll scope her out. Or I could, since I know the family. I like your thinking, Charles. We will make a P.I. out of you yet. Right, you, I want you to stay here and man the fort, or woman the fort, or whatever. Just, you know, concentrate on finding uh, the... It's red! Dog. We've identified the face in the footage. Well, that was quick. I mean, is that some sort of face recognition thing? No, PC Tullock once nicked him. Johnny Sullivan, known gun for hire. But who would hire him? Oh, we need to find more about this. Tiggy. We've got men on it already. We need to do it quicker than that, Bill. We need to do it now. Right, everyone. Harris can magna pub right now. And I want you to come with me. Marvellous. Yes. <laughs> Oh. My uh, publisher's been contacted by a civil war expert who wants to talk to me. Oh, that's great news. <laughs> Snag is, he's only in London tonight and he's going abroad tomorrow. I can't really leave you alone here, can I? Yes, you can. I'll look after her. <laughs> We're like Cromwell's army, aren't we? Except, of course, I'm a cavalier. Did I tell you I was related to Charles II? Charles II, II. II. <laughs> Well, that's that settled then. You must get the next train out of here. I just wondered if the vicar was in by any chance. No, I'm afraid not. He's away. Mission work. Be back very soon, though. Just <laughs> not yet. I'm his wife. Can I help? I need to speak with someone. Maybe there's another church. No, not for miles. Uh, you can talk to me if you like. A cup of tea? Everybody fan out. Charles Conservatory, Roy Saloon. Tony, you and I will take the bar. I feel invigorated. God, it's great to be alive. Let's be all that dancing. A rush of blood to somewhere. About confidentiality. Of course. Anything you say will be in complete confidence. It's as if you were talking to my husband, I promise. Okay. It's just. I have, I have something to confess. Chunky chips. Okay, then. So, Tiggy. Who wants to start? Not hugely popular in the village, on account of her high and mighty hoity-toity demeanour. Oh, don't you just hate that? Yeah. Exacerbated by the fact that she doesn't really belong. Well, she needs to just get over herself, doesn't she? All Bill could tell me about her financials is that everything is registered to a company called CDF Cotswolds Limited. Ugh, dog food. I think they're quite nice. No, Tiggy. Oh. She's an actual dog food heiress. Chunkies, for real. Chunkies! Mm. Chunkies? Chunky dog food. Chunkies? CD, CDF. Mm. Chunky dog food. Chunkies! Irish stock. My real name's Betty Ryan. Dog foods? No wonder she's keeping that one under her hat. Charles, anything to offer? Well, not really. She's not what you think, you know. She's actually quite vulnerable, <laughs> insecure. And she makes this strange whimpering noise whenever she makes love. Oh. I told you that. You didn't. Of course he has. It was a one-off on the glorious 12th. Glorious it was. Why didn't you tell us this before? I assumed that you could find out these things for yourselves. What, that she makes her strange... Oh, no, 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 no
Anyway, you knew that her marriage wasn't perfect. Well, we didn't know it had been wraithed. The strangest thing, though, I think that she still loves Jeremy. She was just using me to get his attention. She tossed me like a wet rag when she was done. All right, well, on that note, then, I'll go and have a quick with her, shall I? Okay. You're right, right? make all its wealth to you. Does it matter? It's just that I heard that it was dog food. Chunkies, if I'm not mistaken, Betty. Unless I'm barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes? I'm not massively beholden to my wife at the moment. But how is this relevant? No. How chivalrous. I can look after myself. Thank you, darling. Excellent. And I shall leave you be. Ah, 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 ah. I would like to posit a question, if I may. If something would happen to your dear wife, God forbid, who would inherit all this fortune? Cassandra would. Lock, stop and barrel. Now, if you'll excuse me. Darling. So, Tiggy, why don't you like being reminded of where all this wealth came from? It's dog food. Who cares? I hate it. I'm ashamed. Dog food. Oh, yes, I see. Yeah, I don't think it would go down very well with the ladies that lunch at the country club. Is that right? I'd be the laughing stock. What about Jeremy? Does he like playing king of the castle? Hmm? He doesn't care. He's never been interested in money. He used to be interested in me. But you still love him, right? So why make the arrangements for Cassandra's engagement party without him? And what was all that about? A ploy to get his attention. <sighs> Do you know what I said to her? I said, Tilly, don't waste your time. You know when you know, don't you? Actually. Don't answer that, because your taste in men is even worse than the taste of that black tomato gin we had that time. <laughs> when are you going to meet someone? When the time's right. There's no rush. Plus, I have comment. We both have. Oh, you won't forget that Baron needs mucking out too, will you? Of course not. Hi, Cassie. Hey, Fliss. How's it going? Charles. Hi, great. How are you? Good, good. Wow. Mm. Takes me back seeing Comet, all of us hacking out across the fields. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you and Cassie are still close. Uh, yeah, not as close. She's more into parties and moving to London. And I'm more into this. But she mucks out occasionally when I'm away. Listen, I hope you don't mind me asking, but... Do you know of any reason why anyone would hold a grudge against Tiggy? Tig? No. Envy, maybe? She's rich and beautiful. Excellent. Yes. Thursday, then. Very good. Hi. Hi. Yes. Hi. Just thought I'd um, take Comet out. Chill. Well, I'll leave you to it. Strife isn't reason enough alone to kill. Isn't it? Are you sure? Well, not unless there's a motive. You coming in or what? No, I promised Roy that I would find him a pub with a roaring fire and a Spanish barman. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he may end up back at yours. 
Apparently, he's worried about the drafts. Yes, he did mention that. Toodaloo. Fred! What are you doing? I thought you were back at the office. Well, um, I've had a couple of sightings near Harris Cum Magna, actually, so I thought I'd take a look. Oh, good. Well, off you pop, then. Any possibility of a lift? Excuse me? Who do you think I am? Your chauffeur? Been ID'd as Johnny Sullivan. Another note, a gun, and a cake. It could be a heart attack. Yeah, yeah details. That's the all details. Now I'm thinking this is a hybrid cake. A touch of red velvet and a little hint of walnut. Now the flavours will be great, but it's been over mixed. That icing looks delicious, but the bottom a bit soggy. So here's a thought. I mean, I'm just thinking out loud here. What if the death wasn't natural causes, and what if the actual real life cake itself? Was poison? <laughs> That's a lunacy. <gasps> Best not. Shall we leave the master baker to it? Definitely so be. What's happening? Oh, James, you're back. So soon? My meeting was cancelled. Rather, it never existed. So someone wanted him out of the house and out of the way. What do you talk... Will you just tell me what's going on? There has been a bit of an incident involving a dodgy cake and a dead assassin in the kitchen. What? Nothing I can't handle. Bill, can you fill him in? I just need to find out a little bit more about this Sullivan character. Fred! Fred! Oh, excellent work. Is Charles with you? The following Perry Peters. Well, I sincerely hope he hasn't spotted you. God, no, Aggie. He hasn't got a clue. Some digging. What? No. It's what you do. And it's kind of what we do. Sort of the only thing we do together. Well, apart from occasionally. Yeah. Occasionally. Hmm. <laughs> what? James, there is really no need to go out and do any kind of digging right now. Charles and Roy have everything covered. Evening. Oh. It would appear my shop is never shut. Listen, even Tony's hard at it. She's hopefully in the woods mm. getting lucky somewhere. Is she? She always called me to say that she saw him a comfort leaving George's house in something of a state, which is interesting. And, thanks to my research, I think I may have discovered that her suicide note writer may have been left-handed. Where have you got? Well... Johnny Sullivan died as a result of a heart attack mm -hmm. brought on by an allergic reaction to cascadin. To what? What is that, some kind of uh, Amazonian poison or something? 
It's a laxative, actually. James, can you just be serious for a minute? He's right. It is a laxative, and it was all over that cake, but why? Well, to debilitate me, obviously. Someone is trying to hamper this case. <sighs> but how did this cake crusader get in here? That's what I want to know. <sighs> so, someone sets up your fake meeting, assuming that you will come back here to get changed. So you come back here, you go up the stairs, they sneak in. Did you leave the door open again? No. I'd have spotted a cake on the kitchen table, Agatha. Not if they waited till you'd left. Who would want you off the investigation? What, apart from Wilkes? Ooh, let me think. Mm, pretty much everyone. Well, someone else did break in, because your back door was picked by a pro. Sullivan. Let himself in, waits, eats the cake intended for you, and... Hang on a minute. So you're saying that there's not one, but two people who've got it in for Agatha? Precisely that, yeah. This gets better and better. And there's something else. You were right. Sullivan went down a few times, and guess who he once shared a cell with? Don't tell me. Harrison Peterson. In one. And now they're both dead. Here you go. Thanks. Well done. Good work, my man. You'll ace it. So, where's Cassie tonight? Uh, she's figuring out which spa treatment to have with her mum tomorrow. Anyway, I'd I best be off. Oh, no. Ochos. Ochos? Ochos. We have to practice your back ochos. Not to mention your parallel and cross systems. Crumbs. Don't worry. Breathe through it. In that case, if we're stopping, your dad was in prison with Johnny Sullivan. You didn't perchance know him, did you? Oh, I knew of him. Yeah, my dad loved telling stories about Johnny. To anyone who would listen, really. <laughs> Why? He's dead. Anyone else like hearing those stories? Because I know a couple of people that would love to. No one. Hello. Listen, thanks for this. Really. But I'd best be going. Bye. Red! Thought you might like some company. Oh, you thought right. I don't really know what I'm doing, really. I don't know why I keep getting fobbed off with the missing pet stuff when Agatha gets all the glory. All flack, to be fair. But I know what you mean. I get the short store the whole time, from Wilkes and Agatha. And I don't even work for her. So how are we doing on Old Red? Not a clue. I mean, the map shows that he's kind of heading this way, hence the stakeout, but... There's nothing around here for miles except woodland. I know. I don't know where he's heading, but it definitely ain't home. The only place near here is the manor house. You know Agatha rates you, right? She said that? No, of course not. Oh. It's Agatha. But she wouldn't give you the responsibility if she didn't think you could handle it. And for what it's worth, I'm really impressed by all this. Don't be soft. What about you? Have you ever thought about moving up the ladder? You fancy yourself a sergeant? Can't say I have, really. Why not? You do so. You think? Yeah. And just in this world, Aggie, please let me come and stay at yours. I am so bored. It's the middle of the night. I am in bed. Hey, I hope you're still on Perry's tail. What? Who? No, he left. And before you have a dicky fit, we asked him about Sullivan. He knew of him, but he seemed genuinely shocked when he heard that he died. He could be pretending. 
He clammed up when we asked him if anyone else knew. Like he was covering. Our money is on his lovely Cassandra, who, by the way, is going to be at the spa tomorrow. Oh, she will inherit everything if Tiggy dies. On point. She could have hired a hitman and wasn't necessarily a fan of her father-in-law. Food for thought. Sleep well. Oh, I'll sleep well. I'll sleep like a baby. Wake up every two hours crying. I've won. Shall we? What happened to that Spanish barman you promised me? It's his night off. I'm going to stand by the fire. Roy. Barfield has 67 rooms. It has very expensive oil-fired heating, which I never turn on after February. You need to grow a pair. I have a perfectly adequate pair, thank you very much. They just disappear inside my body when it goes below freezing. Well, I don't feel the cold there at all. Probably something to do with going to public school. It toughens you up. That's what you need. I don't want to go to public school. I want to stay by the fire. Fine. Another game? I'm going to say domino. I don't think I could cope with the excitement. Me neither. Well, look, if we're going to sit here all night, let's at least make it a little more interesting. How about a drinking game? Involving what exactly? Tequila. Oh, I'm in. All the tequila, please. James! Mm. What? What? I've got a theory. Well, not a theory as such. More of a sort of a, just like a hunch. No, not a hunch, like a sort of a, a something in my stomach. Wind? No, not wind. James, it's about romance and, and tango. Agatha, and... it's late. You need to sleep. I need to sleep. I need to sleep. No, but you know what they say. Go to sleep in a problem, waking up with a solution. I'll go to sleep. Okay, so you woke me up to tell me that you were going to sleep. Thanks for that. <clears throat> Sorry about the books. Don't be. It's what you do. You've been busy with your book. It's what you're passionate about. Passion! Ah, ah. This is what I'm talking about! James! Passion! 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 That's what this is all about! It's the... James! Can you turn me on? Yeah. Oh. Hey! Yeah. It's good. It's technical. <laughs> Fred! Where are you? Phil, focus. How do you focus? Oh, there you are. Red! Red! bottom bunk. Yellow. Passion. Roy. Passion. Not now, Aggie. No, I'm telling you, that is the key. All that emotional bubbling away underneath the surface. Anyway, how is it all going, Chef Rafe? Oh, it's five stars. Brilliant. Good. Very happy for you. Right, listen. This is the plan. I'm going to go to the spa with my secret weapon and find out what Cassandra knows about Johnny. And I want you and Charles to go and see Mr. Tangerman, see what's really going on between him and Emma. What's it? Well, how will we do that? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Charles will think of something. They're all muckers, weren't they? They went to school together. 
probably did initiation ceremonies together, all that dipping their testicles in a bottle of ink stuff. No, oh, yuck, no. Roy, are you still there? Whoa. A horse? A ho uh, what's a horse got to do with anything? Tony, are you on drugs? <sighs> yes, all right, well, I have to go. Call me when you find out something more, and not before, OK? <sighs> OK, I'm going to get busy with Tiggy. You get involved with Little Miss Princess, see what she knows about Johnny Sullivan. Johnny Sullivan, OK. Yes. What makes you think she'll talk to me? Hmm? Sarah, people just do. I don't know, it's... It's your superpower. Oh! <laughs> what are the chances? Fancy seeing you here. George's love life. What makes Aggie think he's going to spill to me? Old mates from boarding school. Soggy biscuit and all that. Old boarding school mates. Soggy biscuit or no, don't spill to each other. That's the whole point. But don't shoot the messenger. That's what she said. She seems to think that your ball bags have crossed at some point over a bottle of ink. She said what? Oh, hang on a minute. Now you come to mention it. Charles, are you eating bird seed? Very good. So, are you ready for the big night? I'm ready as I'll ever be. Oh, shame about Barry's dad. It is. I would have liked him to be there. I only met him once. We all had dinner together. <laughs> Did he happen to mention a Johnny Sullivan? Ow! Oh! oh, God, yeah, I went on about him loads. Great stories. Although maybe he went on about him a bit too much. Oh, in what way? Well, Mum and Dad were there, and Mum really didn't appreciate the crime stories and prison talk. She can be a bit judgmental. She was pretty hard to Harrison. Oh, maybe she wasn't feeling that great. Mm. How was Perry about that? Oh, well, Perry doesn't have a bad mood in his body. He just sucked it up, as did his dad. My dad was furious. With your mum? Told her she was being well out of order. They had a huge row. We had to leave the restaurant. Oh, I see. Mm. And that was the only time you met Perry's dad? Me, yeah. Uh, my dad felt so bad about it, he went to build bridges. Morning, Charles. All set for the class? I added an extra one in preparation for tonight's show. But we're not in it. Agatha is, and I'm sure she'd appreciate your support. Well, we'll, we'll see. Um, actually, I need to have... A word alone, old boy, if that's... No, of course. Of course. Take as long as you need. Weeks, ten days should do it. George, I need to ask you something. We go back a long way, don't we? And some. Thing is, this is... This is rather delicate. You'll never guess, but... After all these years, I've gone and fallen head over heels in love. Frisky Freight. <laughs> Frisky Freight, indeed. In love? I don't believe. Who on earth brought you to your knees? Well, that's just it, you see. It's, um... You see, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. So I need to make sure that you're OK with it. Me? Why me? It's Emma. Jeremy Leggett Brown bonded with Perry's dad. And that's my understanding. Perhaps. Oh, oh, perhaps he got to this Johnny Sullivan through, through him. Oh, 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 why? Because. Oh. Jeremy doesn't look penny. White thighs. Sarah, are you still alive? Yeah. From here we have out together. Out together, we turn. The lady goes back on her right. On duty, I take it. Hmm. No, uh, off, actually. 
Very nice. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. In we go back. We push her leg out and to the side. Same leg. And together we push back. Push her leg out. Same leg. And together. Then we just present the lady and leg up. Oh, sorry, I'm late. Brain freeze, quite literally. Tango practica, Agatha, Baleos and Cicadas. Beg your pardon? Baleos, leg wraps and leg separation. <laughs> Cicadas. It's very tricky learning these signals that lead into each move. It's just... What did you get on George and Emma? Well. OK, everyone, let's go. Music. Can't really talk right now, Aggie. I'm practicing my footwork. No. OK, well, basically, madly in love with Who is? Remember, Mrs. Drazen, in Argentine tango, men lead, women follow. <sighs> I've never followed a man in my life, and I am not going to start now. <laughs> Who's in love with who? Emma loves George. He knows it and likes her, but can't get over the death of his wife. Apparently, it began with Emma baking him cakes and then moved on to the dance classes. She's becoming ever more possessive. Agatha, how nice. Yes, indeed. At yesterday's tango class, you danced quite a bit with Emma. Did you mention your book, perchance? I might have. Oh, oh. How fortuitous that I'm dancing with you. Because I would like to ask your advice. You know that I'm doing this rather wonderful dance with gorgeous George. Oh. Well, I just wondered when he has me in hold, whether it's important to stand up to him or whether I should be submissive and just, you know, melt into his arms. Passive, powerless, yielding. What do you think? Anything? Nothing? It was just a thought. He looks at you and I, I can't stand it. I'm really sorry, but I think I'm going to have to arrest you. Okay. okay. So, Emma called my publisher and lured me out of town. Mm hmm. Before baking me a cake and adding a special little ingredient in the hope that it would stop me dancing. Well, the dagger could have done that for you. If it had been real. Who says chivalry's dead, eh? Must be in the blood. <laughs> she had no idea about Sullivan's death and is mortified that she triggered it. Well, I should be grateful, really, because, in effect, that cake saved my life. Shame about that. Oh, don't sound too disappointed. We still need to look into Jeremy Laggett-Brown's movements. Whether he was abroad when he said he was. Think you could maybe help with that? No. It's police business, and oh, God. we're already on to it. Oh, I've got to go. Oh, the icing on that cake looks so good, I had to have a little nibble. Oh, police business, coming through. I'm so sorry. I had no idea Emma would go that far just to stop me dancing with someone else. Well, it's a crazy little thing called love. And she knew that I reminded you of Helen. And you do. Helen loved tango, but we never learnt, so I never got to dance with her. I took up dancing as a way of handling my grief. Handling it or burying it? Helen was my everything. I'm sure she was, but I don't know, maybe, just maybe it's time to move forward. I think maybe Emma could do with your help right now, and maybe even your daughter. Felicity's fine. She coped okay as long as she has Comet and the Manor House, she's OK. OK. Hey, um, you love horses. 
Let's do you. Yeah. Love all animals. How is this fella? Oh, he's a gorgeous boy. Good as ever. He must be pretty tired, though. I mean, going out twice yesterday. Sorry, I don't follow. Oh, Charles told me that Jeremy took him out in the afternoon and then you took him out in the evening. It was you, wasn't it? And even though Comet no longer belongs to you. Oh, nobody owns Comet. He's his own man. And Tiggy doesn't mind, as long as he's well looked after. Even in the middle of the night? Sure, I couldn't sleep. My dad was out rehearsing, as he does. So we all set on the plan? Yep. Go. Oh! Surprise! What are you lot doing here with the talent? Well, some of us are anyway. <laughs> no, we are part of the lovely Cassandra's tango extravaganza. We're rehearsing. <sighs> In fact, could I have a moment of your time? Yes, 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 but just make it quick. In a flash. Oh, what? I'm sorry. Oh, you watch it. <clears throat> so tell me, how did you get on with Perry's dad? Didn't know very well at all. Oh. Well, that's odd, because Cassandra told me that uh, you had gone to see him after your wife humiliated him about all the Johnny Sullivan the story. Signature, sir. Go, 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 go. It seemed like the decent thing to do. Oh, what about Sullivan? Did you meet him too? No. Well, that's odd, because he was at my cottage waiting for me with a gun. Good God. I'm sorry, I, I failed to see a connection. He's dead. So whoever paid him has quite frankly wasted their money. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry again, I didn't mean to do that. I hope that. you're going to be better than this tonight. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. It's gone. Well, he wasn't lying. He was out the country two days ago. Really? Where? The Kamar. How do you say that? The Camargue, south of France. Yeah, and then Italy a week before that, Siena. Which is all very nice, but what does it actually tell us? Well, it tells us that he was lying to his wife about being away in Spain on business. What was he doing there? Horses! The Camargue is famous for its white horses. And Siena is famous for its paleo. One of the largest horse festivals in the world. Invited me. Have you seen him? Yes, I have. He's here somewhere, wandering around looking puce. No idea why. Oh, I hope you don't mind. I borrowed James. Oh, go ahead. Borrow away. He's very good. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Still don't quite know how he got roped into it in the first place. But... Oh, don't be silly. You're going to smash it. <sighs> Sarah, tell me, why was Perry at the vicarage the other day? I'm, I'm afraid I can't say. We, we spoke in the strictest confidence. Oh, come on. It might be relevant. I mean, is it to do with tonight? No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, oh. I can't. I can't. I can't. Mm. Right. <sighs> Don't let Perry out of your sight. All night. Yeah, we won't. you'd appreciate a subtle police presence, just in case. Please, no more shoves tonight. I promise. Mm. Well, you seem a little more relaxed. Yes. Yes, it's, it's Jerry, actually. He's been almost civil. Maybe my ploy worked after all. Oh, it's been rather nice. He, uh, he took me for lunch after the spa and made quite the fuss. 
just like the old days when we bought this house together. We were madly in love. Right. Here's a question. Has Jerry always been into horses? Jerry? No. No, he suffers them. We can ride, though, can't he? Ride what? Horses. Allergic to the things. <laughs> Charles told me when he was talking to Felicity yesterday, Jeremy Laggett Brown came out to the stables and said he was taking Comet for a ride. Given what his wife said, that don't make no sense. No, it really doesn't. <laughs> It's red. Wait, how does he know you? Oh, he was a stable pup, but we lost him. That's it. He's been trying to make his way home the entire time. Um, thank you all so much for coming back. Um, we thought we'd do the speeches in here this time and um, make the announcement ourselves to save our parents from having to do it. <laughs> so, if you would all join me in a happy birthday toast to the most beautiful lady I've ever seen in my life, a woman that I can't wait to marry, to Cassandra. 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 Please welcome to the floor George and his partner, Agatha. Diary dates. You had to go and spoil the mood. Has Felicity just come back from being away? Yes. Where's she been? Uni friends in London. Do that often, does she? Now and then. And was she away last week? Yes. She wasn't back. I need my standing. There's something wrong with Tiggy. I'm coming with you. You stay here. You and I are Barry. Come on. Just had a few too many. Uh, clearly, just have your light down. No, 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 no. She's not going anywhere. Tiggy, look at me. Have you taken pills? What has that got to do with anything? There's a couple of antidepressants. I've been feeling a bit down. Bill, check the bedroom. Call an ambulance. Don't you dare. I will decide what's right for Tiggy. Thank you very much. I am her husband. That's not all you are, though, is it? Come on out. I know you're here. Felicity. little affair are you? The Camargue, Siena, even though you hate horses. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, really? Agatha, 
pills, identical to the ones we found on Harrison Peterson. Huh. I'm talking about you knowing Johnny Sullivan from Perry's dad. I think you tracked him down and hired him to kill your wife. Felicity here, prompting the premature fireworks. What? You are so out of order. No, I'll tell you what's out of order. You having Perry's dad killed. I think he put two and two together after you tried to bump off your wife. And you didn't want anyone to find out, so you had to get rid of him, using his death to cover your own tracks. And then you sent Sullivan after Agatha. But fortunately for me, Sullivan had a bit of a sweet tooth, didn't he? All this for her, eh? Oh, Jerry. Me and Jerry, you've got it so wrong. Really? Have I? Because I spoke to your father, and you know what he told me? That you were away at exactly the same time as Jeremy was. And another thing, unlike him, you love horses. <laughs> I don't need you to tango to prove you love me. I know you do because you were prepared to. <laughs> Wait. What's going on? Why would I be into Jeremy? Well, I'll tell you why. Because if Tiggy dies, Cassandra stands to inherit the fortune, but not the house. And if you two are together, all of this will be yours again. The house, the stables, Comet. Oh, imagine. Worth putting up with him for? <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's nonsense. Hey. Oh, fancy that. A Cory Ducat. A left-hander. Harrison's suicide note, written by someone of the left-handed persuasion. What's going on? I still miss her, Dad. And it just feels like you've forgotten about me. The only thing I have left of her is this house and comet. Which is why you hatched this little plan with Jeremy. The only way you could think of to get your home back. It's transactional, isn't it? Am I right? No. It's not about that. We love each other. <laughs> really? You poor, deluded man. Who do you think you are? Felicity. I never wanted to leave. Mum died, Dad. And this was all we had. And you can have it again, my darling. Don't! I don't want you! I've never wanted you! How could I? I've been your daughter's best friend since we were little. Do you see the lens I have to go to just to get back here? I never wanted to go. I just don't want to be here. And this is my home. I'm sorry. I never realised how much I was asking you to give up by moving. You must have been so alone. <laughs> Where will your mum say? I don't care! Care to share? Harry came to see me. He needed to confess his doubts about deadly dogs, but he needed to worry, but he was just fine.
All she wanted was to come home. Don't we all? A bit harsh. Especially as I've asked Gustav to turn the heating on. Praise the Lord. You can always come and stay at mine if you like. Oh, spot for choice all of a sudden. That's very kind, but I'm not really a vicarage kind of guy. <laughs> and as for you, well done on the dog. Thank you. Well done on the murders. Thank you. Team efforts. God, we're good.